Holy mackerel. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Holy Mackerel Moments with Harry Hart Brown. That's me, episode two. First of all, the stories have been rolling in. Cool. Yeah, way cool. And for first-time viewers, just so you know, Holy Mackerel Moments are those moments in life that kind of blow our minds in the best of ways at the mysterious ways in which life works. Spirit, timing, dreams, intuition, inspiration, nature, miracles, magic. Oh, ho, ho, it's magic. They're just moments that make you kind of want to say, holy mackerel. If you would like to share a holy mackerel moment, you can read details below. I noticed my email address is not a clickable link, so you might have to type it out. Aw, oh, man. Oh, man. And if you choose to do so, I thank you for that. And I thank you all who have sent me stories. They are great. And also thank you if you took a moment to like, boink, subscribe, boink, comment, da-da-da-da-da, and share. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Oh, my! <laughs> Sorry, I, I just love that. And when you do do those things, you're helping to get the stories out there, which can be uplifting. Yes! And you're also helping me increase my ability to keep making these videos. So for that, I thank you. Cool. Today's program is going to start with three short stories followed by the main event. Kind of like some appetizers before the main course. Yum. So let's go. I was working on the first video in front of my computer and finally I said, ah, too much computer time. My eyes, my neck, my bottom. Harry, take a walk, move your body, get out in the fresh air. So I took a walk. Almost immediately, I bumped into an acquaintance. We started chatting, and out of the blue, she said, there have been so many miraculous events around my horse. I said, oh? She said, yeah, I swear he has his own guardian angel. I said, oh? She said, yeah, like, for example, a couple years ago, I was really struggling financially, and it was getting near the end of the month, and I was afraid I wouldn't have enough money to feed my horse. And I was driving down the road, and there on the side of the road was a bale of hay. <laughs> I fed my horse. Yes! <laughs> I finished my walk, I came back home, I checked my emails, a friend emailed me saying, Harry, I had a holy mackerel moment today. This morning, I was listening to my podcast, and two of the characters in it were nicknamed Peaches. This afternoon, I had lunch with my cousin, whose nickname is... <laughs> wait for it. You couldn't possibly guess what's coming. My cousin's nickname is Peaches. Holy mackerel! You got three peaches in one day. That's great. Cool. Peaches. 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 By the way, that man you just saw happens to be Jay Proctor of Jay and the Techniques, and he sang about peaches in one of my favorite songs. That was Jay back in the day, but you know what? Years later, he was still going strong. And years after that, he was still going strong. I find that an inspiring, holy mackerel moment, Jay. Good for you. Now, my oldest friend, Kim Michaud, wrote to me his holy mackerel moment. Have you ever had shoulder pain? It's awful. Imagine this. Kim was driving one day, and his shoulder popped out of joint. Can you imagine the intense pain and the fear of, of something like that happening when you're driving? But it turns out, the way it happened, when it happened, where it happened, the fact that it happened kind of saved his life. Here's what happened. He was driving along. He was preparing to make a left turn. And just as he was going to start a pop, his shoulder popped out of joint. He jerked the car to the right into the next lane, just as another car whooshed, whooshed by him quickly, closely on his left side. So if his shoulder had not popped, he would have made his left turn right into that car. Thank you, 
pop. Phew, what a relief. And thank you, Kim. He has some interesting details about that event that he wrote in the comments section beneath my first video, Holy Mackerel Moments, uh, part one introduction. So if you want to read more about his pop, you can read his comment. Thank you, Kim. And um, you get a certificate. Cool. Ha. All right. Here's the main event. My friend Bart Williams was born to make people laugh. We have nothing to say. <laughs> that was Bart imitating Oliver Hardy. One of Bart's great comedy idols was the amazing Buster Keaton, comedy legend. And one day, when Bart was a boy, he was hanging out with some buddies, and one of them said something that caught his attention. One day, he said to us, oh, we went to Buster Keaton's house last night. And I went, you did? <laughs> well, I, my voice wasn't that low then, but <laughs> you did? <laughs> Bart got Buster Keaton's address from his friend, and that Sunday, after church, he got on his bike and rode 10 miles to Buster Keaton's house and just hung out there. He did this repeatedly. When my mother found out, she said, Don't you go and bother those people. They'll call the police. What do you mean, don't you can't do that? Promise me you'll never knock on their door or ring their doorbell or something. I said, Mother, I promise I won't. So I never did. I would just stand looking needy and wait like <laughs> at the bottom of the driveway, close to the mailbox. Finally, one day, Mr. Keaton emerged from his front door, walked up to Bart, and introduced himself, and they started talking. And they found they had a very nice connection. But he was a nice man. He was a, he was a sensitive guy. He could read my mind. Now as an adult, I can look back and I can see how he sort of figured me out as a, as a little spirit, as a little individual. After a few visits, Mr. Keaton invited him in to see if Bart wanted to help him with some chores around the house. And sort of took me in and said, you want to help? And that gruff voice of his, want to help him with some things. And we pulled weeds and we did things like sprayed the numbers on trash cans with a, a stencil. And uh, he told me, don't breathe that stuff. <laughs> That's poison. Young Bart had never seen anyone smoke that much. I said, uh, gee, Buster, when did you start smoking? He said, oh, my parents, they wouldn't let me start smoking until I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> one day, Bart noticed that one of Buster's fingers, the end of his finger, was missing. I said, gee, what happened to your finger, Buster? Well, when I was your age, I used to bite my nails. <laughs> Those were nice times, I think, for both of them. Many years later, Bart was at a function and he recognized a woman. A woman, it was Eleanor Keaton, Buster's widow. And he approached her and said, you, prob you probably don't remember me, but when I was a boy, I used to ride my bike to your house and spent time with Buster. And she went, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> You're all grown up. <laughs> So she gave Bart her card and said, keep in touch. And he did. And they had visits. And when he looked at her address on her card, he saw that where she now lived and where he now lived, they were so close together, he could see her home from his home. No more 10-mile bike rides. And what did Bart have to say about all that? It was just one of those God meant this to all happen sort of things. By the way, those clips of Bart are from a panel discussion about Buster Keaton, hosted by Bart and featuring some of Keaton's relatives. It's wonderful. I'll put the link below and the link to the publisher, who has all kinds of great videos posted. One night on the phone, Bart told me the most extraordinary story. Because he loved comedy and loved performing it, he did tons of theater. And he noticed that whenever he was rehearsing a play, he would have these lucid dreams about a man who would visit him and give him comedy tips about the role he was currently playing. And it wasn't Buster Keaton. It was someone he'd never seen before. Rather, tall, distinguished-looking man with a British accent. 
And he would say things like, but at rehearsal tomorrow, when you say that line, try saying the first part of the line, then stop, wait a beat, turn your head, finish the line, then sit down, you will get your laugh. Bart woke up remembering the instructions and did them as told at rehearsal the next day and every time the director would say, oh, that's great, that works, that's funny, keep it in. So Bart was very grateful to this dream helper and one night he said, excuse me, who are you? The man said, call me Haw Tree. Bart said, Haw Tree, is that one word, two words? Is that a nickname? Is that your first name, the last name? I don't under, that is all you need to know, young man, simply. Call me Hawtree. Bart said, all right, and he did. Occasionally, Hawtree would appear in his dreams with a friend. This friend was someone with his own field of comedic expertise, like physical comedy. And he would coach Bart in things like doing a good pratfall. <laughs> or doing amusing dancing, or dueling, or all kinds of fun slapsticky stuff. Needless to say, Bart benefited greatly from Hawtrey and his occasional guest artist friends. But he was so curious, who the heck is this? One day in the library, Bart was leafing through a large book of theater history, and he turned the page at one point and <gasps> saw a very familiar face. It was a photograph of a man. <gasps> The name beneath the photograph was Hawtrey, H-A-W-T-R-E-Y. Sir Charles Hawtrey, born 1858, died 1923, had a very successful stage career and was regarded as Britain's leading comedy actor of his generation. He was mentor and role model to younger actors. <sighs> Bart found his man. The next time, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but it's so sweet. <laughs> the next time Bart dreamt of Hawtrey, Hawtrey appeared with one of his friends, and before he could say a word, Bart said, Good evening, Hawtrey, or may I call you Sir Charles? At which point Hawtrey looked shocked, and his friend went, <laughs> He's on to at last, Charlie. Bart was on to him at last. And that's a holy mackerel story, if I've ever heard one. Um, Bart's no longer with us, but I thank him for the memories. And who knows, maybe he'll come to me in my dreams and give me his comedy tips. I'll work on it. Thank you for listening and watching. And I hope you're holy moly. I hope your holy mackerel moments are plentiful and joyful. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> pa. <gasps>